Hey guys, so I'm going to be showing you a new tutorial today and this is going to be about looking at assets that you found online and how to import those efficiently into Unity, looking at all the textures and the best practices that you can do that when you look for them and you try and find them online. So let me give you an example. I'm on CG Trader here, which has a whole range of free paid and premium assets. I'm on a section which have just got a lot of weapons because this is just going to be what I'm going to use. You want to filter whether you're going to buy one or filter it by free. You want to check a few specific things. There's a lot of filters usually at the top of websites and other things like that, whether you get these from the asset store or otherwise, because sometimes if you're going to get assets online, they're not built for unity out of the box. Some of them are and some of them aren't and we'll touch on those today. Now you, I would usually filter them by low poly, free, and you can specify by different formats if you really want. And then you've got a whole bunch of free. And like I said, some might be built out specifically for unity and come with specific unity textures, but if not, We'll go in. So today I'm going to be using the Thompson submachine gun as an example. Make sure to check out the description, check how many polygons, check what type of textures if the developer does say that, because in this case it does come with a metallic smoothness which is very specific to Unity, but it comes with all the specific maps which might be all separate if you're getting somebody who hasn't specifically exported for Unity itself. So I've already downloaded the parts of the asset which are important, so I've downloaded the texture and the model. The model is using an FBX, you could import the OBJ if that was important to you, but the FBX is usually the best one with the smallest file. And you can, the textures are usually zipped up, you can right click and extract here. And you can see that this set comes with, we we'll want for Unity is an albedo transparency, the AO, the metallic smoothness and the normal. In some cases, that you might only have the metallic and say the roughness and you need to combine those together. So I have shown this in other tutorials, but let me give you the example of how this could work. So if I grab just the metallic by itself and the roughness map, because these are the usually the things that are exported out for other engines, we'll start off with the metallic map. I'm just going to in Photoshop just double click on the layer to get rid of the locked layer and press enter. Now we need to go to a layer, layer mask and from transparency because we're going to do a transparency on this layer to make it into a metallic smoothness. Now you've got a roughness map here. We need to convert a roughness map into a glossy map. So what we can do is we can just double click on the layer again, press enter, then we can go to image adjustments and invert and we invert this into a glossy map. We can just press Control A, Control C to copy that over. We can go to our actual channels themselves. Make sure we tick the little eye in the top corner of the channels so we get the mask highlighted and then we can paste into this mask here. So then when we show our object, it looks slightly transparent. So it overlays our glossiness map over the metallic to create a metallic smoothness map. And then what we can do is we can save that out into our folder again as metallic smoothness. And I'll just call that final. And I usually like to save it out as a PNG, can be Targa, whatever you would like. Now we can go into Unity. And what I like to do is usually create a new folder. And what we can do with this folder is we'll just create, call this the Thompson, for the Thompson machine gun. And in there we can create two folders, one called materials and one called textures because these are really important to us now. So we can go back to our object itself. We can grab the FBX model. We can take the normal. We can take our metallic smoothness final or the metallic smoothness that might be given to you. You can take the height if you like, but it's not as relevant. AO, albedo transparency, because that's what we will need. You could just drag those into your Thompson folder or right click and drag them accordingly. Now, our Thompson machine gun is, as you can see there, it is visible on this side. You can see on the import settings, you can choose to generate light mapping UVs if you're going to light map a weapon like this. The rig should be set to none if you have no animations. You want to untick import animations if it has none because it doesn't need it. You can say in this part of the materials section, you can then say that you want to extract the materials from the object. So in this case, we can just put them into our materials folder of the Thompson. 
So now once we've extracted it, you can see that it has a material that we were looking for. Then you can add the albedo, you can add the ambient occlusion, you can add the normal, which may sometimes need fixing because Unity requires you to do a quick fix. And then you can add the metallic smoothness. And then once we've done that, we can put all of our textures into the textures folder, keep it all nice and neat. And then we can go and drag this object into our scene here. And let's see in this example, it's a standard render pipeline. If you want to export this, you can add URP or HTRP to your project. And then in the example, which would have this material would become pink. You can go to edit and you can go to the the render pipeline settings and convert these materials to whichever pipeline you're using. So remember is that when you get assets online, you look for the low poly version. If it's PBR, you can convert your metallic or roughness map if you have them separately into a metallic smoothness map. Add those to your materials, be able to extract the materials from the model, be able to bring them in. And I will make one mention that if your asset is really ginormous in your scene if the developer is not uh, scaled down by a good size you can might want to take this into your 3d program just the fbx file and scale it down against a 1.8 meter human being and get a rough size of how you want it to be and then re-export the fbx from your 3d program but these were just the basics of doing it and I hope this helped you out. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.